Okay, I guess we are starting. Just give me one minute. Okay. So let's dig in to the um, scope and also the build as far as we are and talk about challenges. Uh, we are now also, we are team. I'm not doing this by myself. So um, we have uh, Mark Bridgewater on the team from New Zealand. And we have Chris, from Chris Lombardi from the US and Mark Prince is uh, currently joined from the UK. He's trying to solve this thing, not <laughs> just by myself as I usually do, but it's nice to have some help from people around the world. And uh, let's just go to the scope of this 3D printer. We can first, first you can just have a look at the, um, the COD model, what we have right now. So this is what it looks like from the outside. So far, probably gonna change uh, something, but uh, let's just get rid of the enclosure and have a look. Also the side pod. So if you wonder, yeah. Now let's just go to the scope and see. Bring the scope over. So, I mean, there's, there are so many, um, so many uh, builds out there now. Uh, so many nice uh, DIY core X Ys. You have the war on. We can we can talk about the competition. Uh, just let me go through this uh, just briefly. So, for requirements, develop a premium DIY FDM FFF 3D printer for the 3D printing community. Uh, we should have an advanced sea lift with the kinematic coupling system. Uh, Touchscreen is uh, we're discussing maybe optional. Hello, Mark. Nice to see you here. Open source project, of course, uh, scalable size, but we are um, looking for like a stock size around 350 build and um, we're looking at using 2040s 2020s um, maybe also a version of 3030 profile frame mark bridgewater is looking at building a 3030 i'm looking at building a 2040 with also some 2020s and we want belted C or ball screws for the C. Let me know what you think about that. We do, do not want uh, lead screws, okay? So lead screws is out of the question. Um, of course, we want advanced top of the line firmware, uh, which means like um, rep wrap or clipper. So uh, Chris is uh, well known with Clipper. I'm well known with the Rep Rap and also Marlin. Uh, we want a premium controller, minimum six drivers. They don't need to be like high amp uh, drivers, but uh, yeah, we want some premium stuff there. And of course, we want good cable management. For function, we want auto tramming. Uh, first of all, 
all functions needed for a trouble-free experience, user experience, and also a trouble-free uh, build, and also trouble-free sourcing. All basic functions plus any feature that making a premium 3D printer. Auto tramming we want uh, of the kinematic sea lift. You want to be able to connect to the printer by internet. If you have any inputs here, we, uh, this, is, this is a live document, so please fill in. I agree, asset. Um, I'm using do it uh, myself and but the thing is with the duet, yeah, there might be, we have, we have other so, uh, choices as well, as far as it comes to more drivers on the board. And for uh, looking at competition, we have the, the Rattrig V-Core 3, which is a very nice build. It also had, has the, the C-Lift we are looking for. I, I'm not sure they have the kinematics Coupling uh, done right, but uh, it looks okay. We have the Heavorch. We have the Voron. And we have the BLV, MGN Cube. Uh, I'm not sure Annex Engineering is a comp competitor as they do um, Crow XY and not Core XYs. But we also have the VC Bot from Simon, very nice uh, what he's doing as well. As far as design requirements, let's just go to uh, quickly go through this. I can I can link to this uh, document also uh, later in the description so we can have a look at it. We want a fully enclosed frame that's essential. We want blind joints for uh, assembly, essential as well. Carbon Profile for X axis. Um, maybe it's like more nice to have. I can move this one uh, to nice to have, but that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, 30 30 profiles actually moved away from that from essential and made it nice to have. I, and there are some challenges when regarding 30 30s. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but yeah. Uh, of course, we want uh, fine milled cast aluminum build plates. That's very essential. We want a HEPA filter. Uh, active heating is also uh, desired or nice to have. It's not essential. We may be starting with the passive heating, but... Uh, Let's see where we go. Um, we want separate AC and DC components. Uh, dry box cabinet for the filament. That's been more, <laughs> but been a very big challenge for us. Uh, it's desired, but I'm thinking it's more essential to have a premium DIY. We, let's move that to essential. Let me know what you think. Uh, we also want talking about active, of course, active heating for the dry box. Um, looking to the comments, uh, Richard asked about Clipper. Yes, we are looking at implementing Clipper as an option as well as a RepRap firmware. So th those can not, does not rule out the other. Um, Heated the dry box cabinet. Yes, uh, we want that as well. Uh, I'll just move that to Nice to have might be essential for us but, uh, Yeah Water cooled hot end uh, that might be a challenge. That's why we Added the uh, mark Prince to the team because he has uh, some experience with that um, if we are looking at high temp enclosure, active heating, then water cool hot end might be a must. The prototype will probably be without a water cool. My water cool might be an add on later on. Let me know what you think.
uh, toolbar for connectors. When I'm talking about the toolbar, I'm talking about a PCB on the carrier with a connector. So you can just hook on your hotend uh, module, whichever hotend module you want. You might want different hotends and you should be able to change and just, you know, click it in with a connector and all the fans and whatnot, uh, heaters and uh, everything is connected just by one uh, connector through the PCB, which goes to the controller. Yeah. Okay. So, um, direct drive is nice to have. In a build like this, we might uh, have to look at the Bowden system. But let's aim for a direct drive. It's not not so easy with the direct drive when we go with a heated chamber. If you're looking at high temperature chamber, but we yeah we would like to add the direct drive to the system. Multi extrusion is just like nice to have. We are starting off with one. I um, might add more, uh, especially if we go Bowden, then multi extrusion might be a better, um, a more easy option in a Bowden setup. A nozzle cleaning function would be really nice to have. I'm also looking for that. Not sure how to implement that at this point. If you have any suggestion, please let me know. I'm just going to have a look at the comments. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking for an automatic tool changer, uh, but maybe just like a manual one. There are something coming from Bontech now soon. We might look at using that. I know Simon is looking at it and also more people in the community and looking at this new thing from Bontek. Not sure what it is, but it's coming. Yeah, we, it's coming more information about that uh, soon. For the electronics, we want 24 volts uh, for the DC stuff. Uh, we want uh, AC silicon heater for build plate heating. And also might be silicon heater in the dry box. Uh, might also be infrared something. Uh, we don't know. Uh, but um, Chris, uh, Chris uh, from the US is working on that. I guess he's still sleeping. He's on another time zone. For the linear linear moments, we want MGN rails. 12 for Y, uh, 12 for Y and C. Y, C, and 9 for MGN9. Looking at using MGN9 for X, it, it saves a lot of weight. Going with 9 for X, we don't need a 12 there. Uh, we need 12 <laughs> for. Um, the 2040s and uh, the 3030s because 9 is too narrow. But on the carbon rail, we can use a 9. Carbon rail for the x axis. Uh, Maxwell kinematic C lift. Very important. This has already been designed, so that's fine. We want, of course, high end GT2. Uh, components belts and idlers and bearings and whatnot uh, we I'm looking at using a nine millimeter belt at least for the C 
we might discuss six millimeter for the AB system or the XY system if you want to call it. I'm uh, going to run the belt backside uh, from what's normal because then we don't have so many uh, teeth. Um, we don't have so many idlers with teeth running around, which is nice. With only be like two or four maybe with the teeth and the rest will be bearings or smooth idlers. So looking at 0.9 high torque steppers for X and Y or A and B as it's called. Uh, stepper motors should be outside. Uh, we can have a look at that in the COD model. So we of course need belt tensioning system, a good belt tensioning system. I recently developed a very good belt tensioning system for the Core XY, the baby, the V baby. If you know the V baby from before, or you can take a look at that one. There's a COD model to look at as well. Uh, auto tramming, uh, auto bed leveling, yes. And it would be nice to have all metal carriers and part option. When we go, if you're looking at uh, enclosure temperature at yeah at a higher end, let's say like, let's say 80 80 uh, C then we are starting to melt plastic parts there are some materials that we can use which withstand like 150 so that could be an option but also need to be uh, the filament uh, need to be uh, you know not you know, not too expensive and also need to be easy to source so all those uh, challenges com come into play as well. Uh, resume function. Uh, we are not right there at the moment. It, that might be a challenge for us and it, it's maybe not so important. Let me know what you think about resume function. We, I'll put that in the desired uh, column. So we want six step drivers minimum. 22 on nine, I'm looking at aiming at using. Those are uh, affordable and good. Uh, I would like to have a board with integrated uh, drivers or onboard drivers, not the step sticks. The onboard drivers is better than the step sticks, they also withstand more, they can deliver more amps. Of course, if they break, there's a, there's a challenge to change them, but yeah. I've been working with the duets now for a long time and it's been no problem. And uh, I, really, I really like the, the onboard driver option. Touchscreen as an option, looking at 7 inch capacitive uh, touchscreen. We don't need a touchscreen since we have a clipper or a rep wrap, but uh, firmer, I mean. But it's, it's nice to have. Filament sensor, of course. Internet connection, yes. Um, thermal sensor for high temp materials. I'm not sure what I mean with that. Sensorless homing and put that just in the desired column. I mean, it's not so important, but it would be nice to have. Plug and play cables and connectors would be nice to have. I put that in, in the essential column. And the last thing in the scope, I've just added some supplier. Please let me know if you have other suppliers that we should look at using. So we have Maker Supplies, we have Rattrig, we have Motodis, we have RS Components, and of course in Aliexpress we have Mellowstore, Fisek, 
few sets. Uh, Triangle Lab and Big Tree Tech. Are there other we should have here? Please leave a note. So let's go to the Cobble and uh, talk about the uh, different challenges. So, when building a chamber, we of course need, let me add the enclosure again. We have the lid here, uh, just a simple lid really. I'm not sure this is good enough, let me know what you guys think. We of course also need the front door. Digi key, digi key, and yeah, that, that, that. Thank you, uh, Richard. I will add digi key to the supplier list. I've used, been using those uh, actually. Thank you. CRD for hiving parts. Price is here. It's uh, CRD. I don't know CRD. I'll have to look CRD up. Is that short for something? Okay. So, uh, this is currently the enclosure. Uh, my doors are too short. They should stretch down here. I, I'm not sure what happened here. I made, actually made, this, uh, this whole structure is made uh, parametric so I can I, I can just go in here and change parameters and everything will adjust so I can uh, let's say if I want a different size build plate I can just change that and everything will update so that's nice so I just added like uh, a HEPA dummy thing here um, on the back side here, uh, we currently are discussing where to place the, the, the DC components because I'm looking at this one should actually be uh, moved away. So we have, of course, the C motors on the underside here. There are three of them, two in the front and one in the back. Uh, we also want to add like the PCU and also the SSR on the underside here. So the, those can be vented, have a nice, uh, yeah, and, and just hidden under there. So all the AC stuff under here. And then we are talking about, uh, I would like to have the, 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 the DC stuff on the back here or in the side the cabinet and the, the, this side cabinet is, is also the dry box mouser electronics i can add uh, those uh, later richard thank you and asset as well so yeah so this side pod was originally part of the the, the enclosure but that's not really possible because if you see what happens if you see, if you have a look here this is the this icon in the center of the screen that's the center of gravity we want the center of gravity to be in the center of the mechanics so having the side pod attached to the machine is not a good idea especially when we also add because inside here there are there is place for two by one kilo rolls or one times three kilo roll 
and uh, it should it should be actively heated inside here. So so also of course the electronics we uh, talked about adding the electronics here uh, on the inside, but those have to be separated from the rest of the dry pod. So that that that's an issue we have been talking a lot about. And also talking about having the side pod or like the dry box or call it whatever you want, um, like a standalone. So we can, it can stand on its own so it doesn't affect the center of gravity of the machine. I think that's important. Uh, because also if I added now like two kilos on the side here, the center of gravity would be even worse. And it will change, also change, uh, you know, during the print. When you print something, the, cent the center of gravity will move if the, if the spools are attached to the, to the frame. So separate side pod, it's probably the only option for us. And then we might need to move the electronics somewhere else, not like in the front here, but maybe on the back here. What do you guys think? We can add those on the back here and has, have some uh, lids or whatever around them. That would be no problem. Also the steppers of course should be outside here. We, of course we need some openings for the belts and whatnot, but that's also a challenge for us. Uh, also for the C motors, you know, um, either using uh, ball screws or belts, we need some openings into the enclosure. In the bottom, that's not a big deal because the heat rises. We also talked about adding the um, having the bottom floor panel in MDF, maybe 18 millimeter MDF. Be because that add, adds like two, three point key, uh, three point five kilos to the bottom of the printer, and it will be good for um, for the center of gravity. Also, make the machine more stable, so we we can avoid unnecessary vibrations and resonance. That's the that's the whole idea. Let me just read in the comments a little bit. Pull after all using to add drag chain in the bottom for the aircraft. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand what you, you're talking about asset. A pull out draw using drag change in the bottom for the electronics. Yeah, I'm not sure what you um, talk about. <laughs> yeah. But as you see, there are many challenges, so we need to figure that out. Let me get rid of the enclosure and the side cabinet and talk about the frame. So currently I have two rails here. <laughs> it's not supposed to be two rails. I'm just looking at options, having a uh, top mounted uh, rail or front mounted rail. I have been looking around and uh, I do see that also the new, new Bontech uh, thing, the new Bontech head, are using a top rail. So maybe we should just go for a top rail. Personally, I was thinking at using a front rail because it means that the bearings will be closer to the nozzle. It's not a big deal, but... Uh, there will be a shorter um, shorter arm from the bearings to the hot end, which means less momentum. But uh, it's not like <laughs> critical anyway. So I can just get rid of this guy for now. Like this. And currently I have... Uh, this carbon um, X-rail uh, X-axis is currently 15 by 15. I'm not sure if using 15 by 15 or 20 by 20, but maybe we will just go with 20 by 20 because like that's more standard and the weight difference is nothing. 
drag chains for the wiring. I'm not a fan of drag chains. <laughs> if we go with drag chains for the wiring, let me just you you can barely see me now. Let me <laughs> close the curtains. Okay, that's probably better. <laughs> yeah, so uh, about the drag change, <laughs> they, they co caused me a lot of problems when I used to have one in the, my first 3D printer, which was uh, Black Widow. And uh, the drag chains, they... Uh, destroyed the cables inside so they were they were shorter than whatnot so if we go with drag chains try drag chains then we would ha also need to go with dra drag chain cables which is special and expensive i've done that before and that works but it depends on the community how much they are willing to spend on drag chains and cable management and whatnot because it will add, it will add some costs, and uh, it need to be done right, or your cables inside the drag chain will be destroyed. We can com come back to that when we are starting prototyping. Then we have a look at drag chain option or uh, other options. And we can have a look at the kinematic coupling system on the bed. This is something I'm really excited to implement. We can have a look at how it actually is. Uh, it's quite a quite a complex uh, design. You can see the drawing here. What's wrong here now? Okay, here we go. Let me just isolate this thing. So this is the Maxwell uh, criteria for a kinematic coupling system. This is used on like mirrors and stuff that needs to be exactly in the same, in the correct position at all times. Uh, taking into consideration um, uh, thermal expansion and and uh, yeah uh, what not that might affect uh, you know the the um, the placement of the bed but this all takes care of that and auto tramming would be uh, very easy to do So we have the points here and there are balls here. They are supposed to slide on some uh, metal rails that we're supposed to put inside here. They are currently out of the design, but they are like five millimeter, easy to source. And uh, this ball should slide easily on those. So they should be independently uh, movable uh, system so that's uh, pretty much what I would talk about right now we did uh, <laughs> discuss yesterday we did discuss about uh, actually making the top of the printer also in carbon to get an even uh, this center of gravity is now not correct because I need to get rid of the side pod. So now it's correct. To get this as low as possible, we talked about. Just let me get rid of the coupling drawing. We talked about making the top of the printer, everything above here, in carbon. But joining carbon cubes 
and aluminum tubes would not be easy so I don't and it didn't make it like a big difference when we took away the top here uh, the center of gravity dropped maybe 20 30 millimeter or something so it was was not like a big deal so I guess we have to live with the center of gravity where it is or we can make something even more heavy in the bottom but that's basically what I had to say right now about this build and we're trying to get this uh, prototype going uh, shortly there's nothing stopping us now from doing that except just deciding that this is the frame we want to go with and then just start building and then then we might change stuff during the the process but that that's fine so that's it guys um i'm not gonna hang around here just <laughs> just for nothing so do you have any questions mark did you uh, redraw something uh so just need to need to use the sleeve okay using sleeve in yeah a nylon sleeve for for the cables you think you mean home stream is would be nice to have a stackable design dry box stacked on top with front loading Okay, so I don't want <laughs> I don't want any filament on top of this machine. No, 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 no. That's a no, no. We don't want to add weight. We don't want a top heavy uh, design. This is going to be as low heavy as possible. So nothing on top of the machine. But also I need to know how much space do we need up top here above the carrier, above the X carrier, you know, for cables and whatnot. I have no idea. Currently, I have that at um, 150 millimeters. What I can do, I can go inside here and I can change that. So, let me see. Okay, so top height, lid top height. We can change that to 200. Let's see what happens. So there you can see here is 200 up top. I don't know. How much do we need? If we now add the enclosure, how much do we need? Cannot open the enclosure now. I'm not sure. We don't we want as uh, as uh, <laughs> small a space as possible. But we do need something up top here oh i just had to get rid of the parameters and then we can open it not sure how much space we need up top here uh, below yes we have talked about having the filament below in a chamber below uh, it's not I don't know we're still discussing this <laughs> but we want to start prototyping so we can get somewhere because now we're like stuck in one place like just discussing going around in circles so uh, yeah we can uh, always sort the filament issue later but we i don't want this filament on the machine because it it, it totally uh, changes the the center of gravity which we want to be in the center of the machine and as low as possible so hanging something on the back here is not not so good either not, not on the side not inside either uh under is a possibility but it would totally change the whole uh, 
the whole look of the machine. So it, it might be needed. Um, um, I would like to have your comments on that. So yeah. Any more questions? Let's stripe light to yeah yes yes Richard of course we need some lighting. I have to add that to the scope. Lighting, we need lighting. I didn't. Where should we put that? I can do that later. But thank you. Lighting is nice. Yeah. Just have to read a little bit here in the comments. Access the electronic drawings for the bill cast the balloon now and Yeah. I guess that's it guys. So a quick update on uh, Project Valkyrie. Valkyrie. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think and uh, if you have solutions to some of our issues on this build, please let me know. Let us know. And uh, let's hopefully, hopefully soon start prototyping. I'm excited about that. I'm really e eager to order, but we need to just decide the the frame size and uh, the frame profiles yeah anything more guys thank you for uh, joining the the stream it's um i'll be back with more, more soon i hope so a new new studio now so looking to do more youtube stuff and uh, thank you again for joining and hit subscribe if you like the content and also the the thumbs up it helps the channel and then next time around i hope we have something going in the prototyping department okay guys see you guys soon